You're a male model? Well, I was, but I quit modeling, because now I'm a lead singer in this really cool band. And Carly would hate you. But no. Get out of here! They may have hosted a web series, but Carly, Shay, and company certainly cross paths with a lot of A-listers. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 stars you forgot were on iCarly. For this list, we're taking a look at celebrities who made guest appearances on this Nickelodeon sitcom. While some of these people were already big names, others had yet to truly establish themselves at the time. In your email, you said you've done some video editing? Yeah, I'm pretty good with cutting room flow. Oh, nice. That's what I used to edit. Nice. Aw, nerd bonding. <laughs> Sam. Nah, nah, it's cool. I definitely have my nerdy tech side. Number 10, Victoria Justice. In the season two finale, Carly is persuaded to participate in a cage fight for charity. Her opponent is Shelby Marks, played by Victoria Justice, who makes the fight personal when she's led to believe that Carly intentionally pushed her grandma. Ah, I fell! I was pushed! Oh, oh, oh. You tackled my grandmother. Ah, I Listen! I was gonna take it easy on you, but now you're going down. Hard. Hard? At this point in her career, Justice had already appeared as Lola Martinez on Zoe 101 and in the Nickelodeon TV movie Spectacular. Less than a year after her appearance on iCarly, Justice took center stage as Tori Vega on the Nick sitcom Victorious. I'm here with some of my friends, including Kat and Jade. Pretty girls, right? Oh, yes. So, can we cut the line and hang here with you guys? Sure. Get the gang and we'll let you cut in line. Yay! <laughs> Another year down the line, the iCarly crew would have a crossover with the kids from Hollywood Arts High School. While it's noted that Tori and Shelby share a resemblance, the episode brushes over the fact that they're essentially doppelgangers. When I typed in Stephen Carson, this picture of my Stephen came up tagged with his name. Doing? Who's she? She's a girl and don't say doing. <laughs> she looks like that Shelby Marks chick you fought. Yeah. But this girl's way hotter. Number 9, Kenan Thompson. iCarly's crossover with Victorious also marked a homecoming for Kenan Thompson. Before he was the longest running SNL cast member, Kenan got his start on the Nickelodeon sketch comedy series All That. Now there's a lot of things you can use to add flavor onions, peppers, but today we're gonna use chocolate. Kenan and his co star Kel Mitchell went on to appear in their own sitcom, as well as a theatrical comedy Good Burger. I'm not a chicken. <laughs> R2, Dexter's a chicken. Chicken, new, new. Uh, I'm not a chicken. It's just that I don't think she wants to waste her time going out with me. That's all. Moo. <laughs> Chickens. Chickens don't moo, man. They cluck. I Party with Victorious was the first Nickelodeon project to prominently feature Keenan in several years with Keenan's mansion providing the home base for a massive party. While the party is actually fairly small by Keenan's standards, he's perturbed to encounter a stalker in a panda costume. The panda? <laughs> you let the panda in my house? No, I've been trying to get rid of this. You know the panda? Man, that free panda bear has been showing up around me for three years now. My house, my health club, my trip to Acapulco. Keenan decides to help out with the revenge plot against Stephen Carson and even gets a solo during the performance of Leave It All to Shine. It's all for real. I'm telling you just how I feel. <laughs> Number 8, Michelle Obama. There's someone in here who wants to see you. Who? Someone very high up in the United States government. Oh, who? The president? Higher. <laughs> I tell you! Considering that Victoria Justice and Kenan Thompson already had ties to Nickelodeon, we imagine it wasn't that hard to book them. But how did the show land the First Lady of the United States? Apparently, this special episode was specifically written with Michelle Obama and her Joining Forces initiative in mind. Joining Forces was started by Obama and Dr. Jill Biden in an effort to help service members. In the episode, the First Lady is drawn to iCarly, since Carly and Spencer's father is a U.S. Air Force colonel. I was watching iCarly with my daughters, and I was really touched by how much you love and care about your dad while he's away serving our country. In addition to raising awareness for Americans in the military and their families, Her Excellency cuts loose with a little random dancing. And now...
Number 7. Emily Ratajkowski Gibby Gibson isn't exactly someone we'd peg as a ladies' man, but he took everyone by surprise in season 3 with the introduction of his attractive girlfriend, Tasha. Who's she? <laughs> Who's you? It's cool. She's just a friend. Give me two seconds. Okay. <laughs> Who is that? Tasha. And you're on a date with her? Yeah. Well, what's wrong with her? If this brunette bombshell looks familiar, that's because she's Emily Ratajkowski, who'd go on to appear in multiple Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues as well as music videos from Maroon 5 and Robin Thicke. Outside of modeling, Ratajkowski has also appeared in a Super Bowl commercial for Carl's Jr. and played Ben Affleck's mistress in Gone Girl. Did you, by any chance, tell anybody anything about us? Even texting or Facebook? Facebook? I use a disposable phone. You buy my presents and cash. I'm not stupid, Nick. I know, sweetie. Did you leave a pair of red panties in my office? I don't know. Maybe. They better be mine. Sweetheart, think. I don't know. I'd have to check my red panty inventory. Andy, I need you to take this seriously, okay? This is the last time we're going to see each other until... Until when? Until it's safe. Although Tasha is clearly out of Gibby's league, she practically worships the ground he walks on. That's Tasha? Uh-huh. And you're dating her? Yeah, pretty much. That's it. <laughs> I told you she was hot! Since Tasha only pops up in a couple episodes, their relationship is kept fairly vague, which makes it all the more hilarious. What about me? You're back in. Oh, thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Later. Okay. Number six, Emma Stone. I met Gibby. I touched Gibby. Oh my God. <laughs> By 2012, Emma Stone was on the cusp of superstardom, having appeared in Easy A, Crazy Stupid Love, and The Help. Yet the young actress still found the time to drop by the set of iCarly. Stone's character, Heather, is starstruck when she encounters the iCarly crew at an eatery. Actually, starstruck may be putting it lightly, as Heather goes into total superfan mode. Oh my god, oh my god, it's iCarly! It's iCarly! Hi! 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 I love you! Screaming in excitement, leaping onto their table, and forcing the gang to take selfies, Heather makes Spencer look like a mature adult by comparison. I need pics! I need pics right now! I need pics! Hi! Hi! Smile! Oh, you're my favorite! Oh, okay! Hi! Oh, oh, hey, hey, you're on my app! Uh, oh my god, I want to be you! Smile! She even breaks into the men's room to touch Gibby and eat his meatballs. It's not what it sounds like. Gibby! <laughs> a couple years after making this uproarious cameo, Stone received her first Oscar nomination for Birdman. Number 5. Jane Lynch For much of the series, Sam's family is something of an enigma, although it's made clear that she doesn't have very nurturing parents. Sam? What? <laughs> it's almost 4 o'clock in the morning, what are you doing here? I'm upset with my mom. We got in another fight, so I packed my bag and came here. We're given a better glimpse into Sam's dysfunctional home life in season four with the introduction of her mother, Pam Puckett. Mom? I know who I am. Who better to play Mrs. Puckett than Sue Sylvester herself, Jane Lynch? If you ever wondered where Sam developed her smart aleck, hostile, borderline criminal tendencies, look no further. Sam and Pam's name calling eventually escalates into wrestling. This isn't what I meant by express your feelings. <laughs> Oh, please, ladies, come on. But the mother and daughter ultimately come together thanks to some aggressive therapy. You know, I guess I could have had a worse kid. <laughs> you mean that? I do, and I I'm sorry I always haven't been as understanding as I could have been. <laughs> you know, like when you get arrested and stuff. Well, I could probably try a little harder not to get arrested. While Pam was only mentioned off screen up until this episode, we developed a strong idea of what she'd be like, and Lynch totally lived up to our expectations. Number 4. Jimmy Fallon Before taking over The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon played himself in an extended iCarly episode. 
The special also featured a Tina Fey cameo, providing a mini weekend update reunion. Wait, how do I how do I do this? Just click that box. <laughs> You're so knowledgeable. As a fan of their web series, Jimmy invites the iCarly stars to appear on his late night show. The segment starts off great, with Sam playing her mustached character and Jimmy plugging a screaming Mel Gibson doll. Things take a turn for the worse, however, when Gibby suffers a wardrobe malfunction. The NCC, a parody of the FCC, thus orders iCarly to pay a $500,000 fine, even though their show obviously doesn't have the biggest budget. $500,000? How are we supposed to get that much money, huh? How? Oh, give it up, we're not. Well, then the NCC is gonna shut us down, so goodbye, iCarly. Fortunately, Jimmy has their backs, helping them raise more than enough cash. What's next? Jimmy meets Good Burger? What's going on, bro? <laughs> bro? Brother? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Number three, One Direction. This boy band was everywhere in the early 2010s, including iCarly. One Direction drops by the set to perform their debut single, What Makes You Beautiful. The song is just one of the episode's highlights, as Sam warms up to Zayn Malik while Gibby tries to give other band members foot massages. The group finds itself down a member when Harry Styles drinks from Carly's water bottle and gets jungle worms. Styles milks his illness so that Carly will continue to wait on him hand and foot. Could you put warm socks on my feet? <laughs> sure. I'll heat up a pair in the dryer. Uh, what else do you want Carly to do for you? Wash your tour bus? You'd think that Harry would have personal assistance at his beck and call, but having Carly looked after him is admittedly funnier. Fortunately, Styles suddenly feels better once he fears Gibby may be replacing him. You don't know you're beautiful. No! <laughs> what? Please, get rid of him. I'm feeling better. Number two, Jack Black. Before she was Carly Shay or even Meghan Parker, actress Miranda Cosgrove made her film debut as Summer Hathaway in the Jack Black comedy School of Rock. I can sing. You can? Mm-hmm. All right, Summer, belt it. Memory all alone in the moonlight. Stop, Not stop. So okay, good. That's pretty good. Black has also frequently collaborated with Nickelodeon, hosting the Kids' Choice Awards on three occasions, so it was only a matter of time until he guest starred on iCarly. Nevertheless, it was still quite the treat when Black stormed onto the scene as an overly dedicated cosplayer. Your stoom is good for an amateur. <laughs> uh, this costume is an exact representation of a Ruthor. Yeah! If you're basing it on the beta version. With Black playing as Spartame and Spencer dressed as a Ruthor, the two turn Webicon into a literal battleground, fully committing to their World of Warlords roles. The two compete to see which one of them is the true warrior. In the end though, it's Carly who reigns supreme. My sister has snatched your brawny jewel. <laughs> <laughs> Our number one pick will surprise you, but before we get there, here are a few honorable mentions. I always watch because I've been worried about your posture. Hey, what's up? Hey, Megan. Hi. Who's she? I don't believe I know you. Where's Josh? Where's, where's Mama Get? What? This is a song I wrote myself, especially for iCarly. Hope you guys like it. You're so beautiful, I need the world to see. Clear. All right, we're done here for now. Please don't leave town until we contact you again. Why can't we leave town? Just don't leave town. I'm sorry, Gibby, I can't find the stapler. <clears throat> That's right, cause I took it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Thank America you, Freddie. Sing. Look out, people! Cause here comes David Archuleta! <laughs> hey, David! Archuleta! Thanks for coming on the show! Oh, thanks for having me. I'm a huge fan of iCarly. <laughs> Who isn't? Uh, losers. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jim Parsons 
A month before winning his second Primetime Emmy for portraying Dr. Sheldon Cooper on The Big Bang Theory, Jim Parsons played an even quirkier character in the season 5 premiere of iCarly. In a role that seems tailor-made for Parsons, he plays a mental hospital patient named Caleb. Will you quit staring at me? Please get me some beryllium nitrate and four metric tons of ionized quadrazine. Convinced that he's from the year 2077, Caleb claims that California is going to sink into the ocean, while Carly is destined to become vice president of the United States. He's not from the future. Is. Gibby, you watch your tone. You are speaking to the future vice president of the United States. Hey, crazier things have happened in politics. He also says that Ryan Seacrest will be taken by aliens, although we think Caleb might be the real alien. <laughs> Hey, Caleb. <laughs> Caleb. <laughs> the TV's not on. <laughs> Either that or those neutronium cotton pants have gone to his head. You can kick me anywhere you want below the waist and I won't feel it. <laughs> Why not? My pants are made of neutronium cotton. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.